Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here now that my two informative videos are done for the day, including a full workout of my overhead press day and a whole video discussing accessory work and isolation work and creating a synergy between the two. Now it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And uh, everyone's favorite fitness YouTuber, Junkie Ward, is now coming out with Primeval Labs with a new product called Neanderthal. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Or call skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. And this is funny because, you know, good old Junkie Ward is putting out a product to optimize testosterone production and boost testosterone. Well, here's my question, Jerry. If it works so good, why are you on TRT? You gonna come off your TRT and come on this product? You gonna go on Neanderthal? You're gonna be a subhuman Neanderthal? Like why you gotta name a product after a primitive species of, of humans. Uh, you know, you, you do realize we outsurvived them. We're superior. Neanderthal's gone. Let that sink in for a moment. So you you want to be inferior to the current, current human species. All right. Whatever floats your boat. But uh, that would be my main question, Jerry. Are you going to come off your TRT to go on this test booster and male optimizing proprietary blend? No, of course not, because it doesn't work doesn't work and you know that testosterone is the only thing that boosts testosterone. Welcome to reality. So what have they thrown in this $70 a bottle proprietary blend? $70? That's more than a bottle of testosterone cost actually. But I digress. What do they have in it? Because he went down the list. Well, it's got this and that and it does all these things. Well, it's got vitamin D3, 5,000 units. You know what? That's actually the one good thing in there. You know what? I can't say this product is completely useless. I can't. You know why? It's got vitamin D3 in it. Of course, I can get a bottle of uh, vitamin D3 that will last three months at that same dose for about five, six dollars at Walmart. Just throwing that out there. Of course, I don't need much D3 because I'm pale skinned and I live in Texas. But you know, Jerry's up there in what, Rhode Island or uh, Maine or wherever it is he is. And you know, he is, uh, as we know now from his other video, he is in fact black. We found out from his DNA test. Uh, you know, that same test Uncle Ruckus got. You guys remember that? Uncle Ruckus had his DNA mapped like that. So yeah, Jerry found out he is in fact 1% black. So okay, since Jerry found out he's 1% black or 1% African, I guess he thinks he needs to make sure he gets that sunshine hormone living so far north. So, you know, uh, nothing wrong with that one. That one's okay. But then we go to all this other stuff. Zinc, 30 milligrams of zinc. No, we still, people don't supplement zinc. Don't supplement zinc. How bad does your diet have to be to need zinc in your diet? You guys not eating meat? Are you vegans? Okay, if you're a vegan, I can see you needing zinc, but the other question would be, why don't you just eat a balanced, healthy diet and don't do silly stuff like become a vegan or a vegetarian and you get all the zinc you need. And here's the thing, people talk about, oh yeah, zinc and uh, boosting testosterone if you're zinc deficient, but zinc is a metal. You really shouldn't be supplementing metals arbitrarily. In fact, supplementing zinc can cause, if you're not careful, because if you do eat a balanced, healthy diet, you throw in a bunch of products that have zinc in it. You got guys like uh, Junkie Ward here telling you, oh, you need a multivitamin. The multivitamin will have a bunch of zinc. This has got 30 milligrams of zinc. Before long, you get so much zinc in your system from all these supplements. If you're eating an actual real whole food diet that's got more than enough zinc in it, to where it blocks your copper absorption. Block your copper absorption, now you have a nutrient deficiency. You have a malabsorption issue from supplementing all this zinc. It's stupid. You supplement zinc, you're stupid. I'm just going to call it like it is. All right, up next, it's got D-aspartic acid in it. He said, yeah, D-aspartic acid to boost, proven, clinically proven to boost your testosterone by uh, 40%. No, it's not. No, it's not. We have, what, one study that showed that? One study. See, let's just understand how this stuff works. When you have multiple studies that look at something and one study shows a beneficial conclusion, but three more behind it don't show the same effect, it's considered to not exist. That's how it works in science. Uh, multiple studies have been done that showed that deaspartic acid didn't boost testosterone. The biggest study, the one he's referring to with the 40% boost, I've talked about this before, it involved what, Italian competitive cyclist? That's the only demographic of people that we have successfully seen deaspartic acid boost testosterone significantly in. Well, do you live in Italy and are you a competitive cyclist? Well, if not, then we don't have a study showing that it's going to boost your testosterone. Next, is he going to throw out some mouse studies uh, like uh, Lobster Liner does? 
throughout mouse studies to boost to show his test booster was proven to work? Well, here's the thing, guys. You've got one study out of several that showed no benefit showing a 40% boost. All these guys had slightly low testosterone and it boosted at 40%. Uh, I want you guys to show me studies showing that a 40% boost in testosterone in the normal range produces more muscle growth. Good luck with that one because you know what? It doesn't. That's not a big enough increase to show significant changes in muscle mass. That's not enough. The problem is that one study isn't enough to show that it works. If that's all you got is that one study compared to all the ones that show it doesn't, then it's safer to say it doesn't work. Deaspartic acid doesn't work. You know, all this maca powder. Oh, that's from the Peruvian Indians. Yeah, they're, Nate. they're Peruvian Indians, so they must have all the magical secrets. El Caratin. What else they got in this crap? Oh, they've got this uh, Rodilla Rosesia, or whatever it's called. And it's kind of lower cortisol. Why are you trying to lower cortisol? Hope you're not taking this post-workout. Better hope it doesn't work. Because what do we know about lowering cortisol post-workout? It reduces muscle gains. You need cortisol post-workout. Cortisol elevation is the one hormone that's been found to be uh, heavily correlated with muscle growth. In other words, your stress hormone cortisol, when it's boosted from working out, the more it's boosted from a workout, the stronger the anabolic response from the training. Why? Because cortisol is catabolic. And if you've induced enough training fatigue to induce an elevated cortisol level, you have usually induced a large amount of muscle growth. And you need that catabolic response. When it's blunted, you gain less muscle. So I hope they're not having you take this supposed cortisol lowering product, lowering product immediately before or after you work out. That would be real bad, wouldn't it? If it actually worked. That's assuming it does. Again, you have ignoramuses trying to give people products talking about hormones as if they actually know what these hormones do in the body. Lowering your stress. You know what else lowers cortisol? eating more carbs. There you go. You want to lower your cortisol at night, your stress levels, try resting, try sleeping more, try eating more carbs, problem solved. Carbs are also very anabolic because they produce insulin, which is the most, it's about the most anabolic hormone in the body. Try eating some carbs. That'll work wonders. Oh, but Jerry and all these guys do ketogenic diets, so they need to come up with anything they can to get their cortisol back under control. Um, as soon as they come out with an injectable version, he'll be right on that. More herbs, herbs supposedly that stimulate FSH. Let me see the data. I want to see the data. Where's the studies? What do we got else in here? DIM. There we go. There's a big one. DIM. That indole 3 carbonyl. Now they're saying, oh, this is going to lower estrogen. Why would you want to lower estrogen? Are you injecting a large amount of testosterone? What happens when you lower estrogen in men who have a healthy amount of testosterone and estrogen? Anyone know? Well, they have heart attacks for one. What? Yeah, it lowers HDL cholesterol. You need a certain amount of circulating insulin. If you are not insulin, but a certain amount of circulating estradiol. If you don't have enough, your HDL goes down. You're predisposed to heart attacks. Uh, your sex drive goes down. Even if your testosterone goes up, if your estrogen goes too low, if it gets pushed down, it hurts your sex drive. It also hurts your bone density. You've had all this talk, oh, you need boron to help with bone mineralization. Why are you giving products that if they actually do what you claim will lower bone density? Are you trying to counter that out? Oh, incidentally, when estrogen goes below or two when you're in the normal healthy range, which is where you would be, isn't that what we're talking about? Insulin goes, or estrogen goes lower. I keep saying insulin. If estrogen goes lower, when you're in the normal healthy range, it also reduces IGF-1 in the muscle tissue. You gain less muscle. Why are they giving them this? I thought they were trying to keep a testosterone in the normal healthy range. Why are you wanting to give people products that lowers the normal natural healthy production of hormones that you need, that you need in a certain amount in your body? Stupidity. Why? $70 a bottle for them to mess up your hormones? Stupidity. Then it's got boron. Oh, fortunately, it's only 10 milligrams because uh, here's the thing. He's like, oh, boron's proven to uh, boost testosterone and lower estrogen. No, it's not. Go look at PubMed right now. Go look at all the medical websites to discuss this. They say that's unproven. There's inadequate evidence to back all of that. 
Boron for people who are deficient seems to help in some cases for people with bone demineralization like osteoporosis. In some cases it helps if they are deficient in their diet. Why is everything in this product to depend on you to be deficient in your diet and have a really piss poor terrible diet? Why? Why can't people just eat a normal healthy diet and eat plenty of whole foods and not have these problems? Uh, but I'm not going to go into the risk of boron because they kept it at a dose that isn't considered dangerous. You uh, triple that though and you can create toxicity that might kill you and that's according to the same website. So that being said, you got boron in there. Don't take a triple dose of this stuff accidentally because that could actually be technically an overdose. Just be aware of that. If you're going to be dumb enough to buy this product and you want to don't, don't accidentally take triple the dose because the zinc and the boron in there, those are dangerous in those amounts. But here's the thing, they're saying, oh, it lowers estrogen boost testosterone. You don't have data to prove that. It's not proven. The medical research says, go look at the medical websites. I pulled one up to check and see what the newest data says. Not enough data to draw a conclusion. In other words, unproven, completely unsubstantiated. Now here's the other thing on the dim, they're over here writing what? It decreases bad estrogen and increases good estrogen. You guys serious? Your herbal extract's gonna do that? Are you serious? Are we serious about this? And here's the thing: ultimately, you've got all this garbage in here mixed together. There's D3 in it, and that's pretty good. Everything else completely worthless. And they're saying it's proven by studies. No, it's not. Boron, diaspartic acid. Diaspartic acid is their main supposed test booster in there. It hasn't done favorably in the studies. They haven't been kind to it. $70 a bottle. The stuff in this bottle is worth less than $5 combined. $70? And it goes back to my other question. Gee, Jerry, if this stuff is that good at boosting testosterone, because you're claiming it's proven to, it's going to optimize it, why are you on TRT? Why aren't you taking this stuff instead of your TRT? Why are you going to a prescription route? Why are you having to go to a doctor? Oh, because this stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work for men with low testosterone. It doesn't work for men with low testosterone. So why should anyone pay $70 for this? If you got low testosterone, uh, <laughs> a bottle of testosterone costs less than this. The real deal costs less than this. Most people's insurance with the copay, they go see their medical doctor would probably cost less than this crap does go get their legitimate prescription for their low testosterone from their medical doctor. Now, people say, well, you're supporting Big Pharma. You're going to support these morons? You're going to support these idiots at this company? You think that's a better use of your money? You think that's better than Big Pharma? You know what? If you're that stupid, if you're that stupid, go ahead and buy it. Go ahead. A fool and his money shall soon part. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.